Today's video is sponsored by Into the AM. What is going on to all my White Lotus fans out there and welcome back to my channel. We are back covering this season two premiere episode one which was titled Chow, an episode in which we meet the new guest of the White Lotus and we get to see some of their backstory, the different dynamics within the different relationships, the lies, the deceit, the deception, and also the toxicity and drama, but also... A lot of these new guests, based on this first episode, we learned that they might not all make it back home safely. We'll be discussing that and so much more in today's Spoiler Breakdown review. But before we get into it, if you all haven't already, consider subscribing to the channel and hitting that notification bell. That way you can stay up to date with all my White Lotus content. You can also give your boy a follow on Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter. All those links can be found in the description of this very video. We're speaking of this video. If you all had a good time, if you enjoyed my breakdown today, do your boy a favor, hit that thumbs thumbs up button as well as share this review to anyone and everyone you know that loves this show just as much as we do but more importantly I love this show so much but I love talking about the show with you all so let's talk about this season two premiere I want to talk about who's your favorite character so far least favorite couples which is your favorite couple who's going to make it back as a couple I'm talking about getting married or divorced and also who's going to come back home alive or dead but also deeper meanings themes you all took away from this premiere and what do you all hope to get in this new season two Let's talk about it in the comments below. So I've said a couple of times, I'm back, we're back. Well, Elliot, this is my first time watching your video. What are you talking about? Well, for those that are just tuning in for the first time, number one, welcome to the community. But I covered the entire season one every single Sunday. And look, I had a, a great time. I love the discussions we had. And I say all that to say this. I would love to do the same thing for season two if you all will have me as your tour guide. Let me know by liking and sharing and commenting, and I would love to have these discussions every single Sunday. With that being said, let's discuss this first episode, Full Spoilers Ahead. And the first thing I want to bring up to the table is let's talk about this new title sequence. Number one, love the acting, love the performances, love the direction, and we'll talk about that more as we break down this episode. But the title sequence is a little bit different. I'm referring to the music, which I love the music in season one. It's a little bit different this time around. It'll take me a little a little bit to get used to it's a little bit of a techno vibe but let's talk about what's actually going on in the title sequence as we break it down here i definitely believe that the sequence is alluding to what we can expect in the plot and the themes in this new season as you'll notice some of the art pieces actors name next to them for example f murray abraham's name you'll see a man courting a woman with another woman looking secretly behind the wall or for jennifer character we see a woman with a monkey now going back to that man courting a woman we'll connect that to Bert who we know is very flirtatious and we can assume as we'll talk about in this episode he wasn't probably that faithful to his wife so we can assume that Dominic took some of those traits with his relationship or missing Tanya a woman holding a monkey we can assume that that monkey was Portia so You'll notice, and I don't want to give all the Easter eggs away, Rewatch that opening sequence with the other characters and also dive a little bit deeper into some of the themes that took away from that opening sequence. Things such as loss or friendship or lust and sex and lies and infidelity and murder and destruction. So I definitely think the title sequence is a, a big kind of, hey, this is what you all can expect this season and I'm loving what we see. I'm going to rewatch that all the time when I see this uh, these new episodes, but let's actually break down the episode as we open it with meeting Daphne who is by herself mind you and she is getting ready to go for a swim but before she does so she introduces herself to some new arrivals and we learn that she's leaving soon and she compliments the hotel from the food the wine the music there's romance in the air and everything she seems very nice We'll talk about her a little bit later in this review, but she wishes them an amazing trip. And I had this feeling immediately that something's about to happen, right? We see her going to the water, she's swimming, and then lo and behold, she comes across a floating body, and it took me back to season one. Obviously, we'll talk about the connections in a second, but I'm like... I wonder if she has something to do about that. And the reason I say that, going back to season one, if you all remember, the opening sequence of season one was Shane talking to a couple at the airport about how someone died at his honeymoon, and we know from season one that it was his fault. So I wonder if Daphne is kind of the Shane in the situation, and whoever is floating in the water might be because of her. We'll get into that later because Daphne, she loves murder. She loves talking about people getting murdered. So we'll talk about that a little bit later. But as we meet some of these other characters, Rocco and Valentina, who learns that their guests are being found in the water. And I say guest because we see Rocco telling her, 
it was one of our guests that drowned in the water, but there's other bodies in the water and they were killed. Put a circle, put a pin in that word kill, because I have a little bit of a theory I'm going to share with you all a little bit later about we might have a serial killer on our hands. But getting back into the breakdown here, get to meet our other guests, which is the Grasco family. We have some married couples. And of course, we have Tanya, who's with her assistant going on this trip. And the first thing I want to bring up here, oh, disrespect to season one cast. I love the cast members and I love the performances. But Jesus, this cast in this new season is stacked with some of my favorite actresses. If y'all don't know, I'm a huge Aubrey Plaza fan, and I, I'm so excited she's here. We got Michael and Perry only. I mean, the cast, F. Murray, Abraham, of course, Jennifer's back. I love this cast so much, and there's just so much excitement going on, so much synergy going on with this new cast, and I love the chemistry. But as I digress, getting back into it here, we see the different dynamics. One, for example, with Roscoe and Valentina and how she kind of is the almost polar opposite of Armand from season one. Like, she blames Rocco for everything. She seems very kind of stern and very kind of, you know, a little mean at times, but we know that comes with the stress of running a hotel like the White Lotus, especially when you have people ending up dying. But getting back into some of these other characters Mia and Lucia who are waiting at the dock at 12 o'clock and I'm thinking to myself who is she waiting for we'll get to that mystery character a little bit later but as we also see I love how again going back to Valentina she's more upfront than Armand right Armand pinned a lot of that negative energy he was saying things behind the guests back but she's like talking to Bert up front like man surprised you made it to Los Angeles considering that you're so old <laughs> it's just like again she doesn't hold back she's very upfront I think that also speaks to like culturally speaking I've never been to Spain that is a dream bucket list vacation one day but I've always assumed and I've heard from some people that, you know, sometimes people in Spain are just a little bit more upfront with their feelings. They're also a little bit more open with their sexuality. So I'm loving how the dynamic is already shifting. It's not just a copy and paste from season one. So Valentina's a little stern, but I'm liking that she's very upfront with her people and not, you know, going behind her back talking stuff. She'll tell you right in front of your face. So I really enjoy that about the character so far. But getting back into the different married couples that we meet so far and the different dynamics that we see, we have the Spiller couple and we which is led by Harper and Ethan and then we have the other married couple Cameron and we have his wife who we talked a little bit about earlier and we learned that they they got money they have kids and there's a different dynamic there right and we see Harper isn't a fan of Cameron and his wife and we'll get to those reasons a little bit later but also what I love about this this these couples they kind of mirror the couples from season one right I think about Harper and Ethan are kind of like the Patton family right Shane and his wife but the roles are reversed where I see Aubrey Plaza, Harper's character, as more of a Shane versus the other way around. And then we have Cameron and his wife. They, they're they very much kind of a, the Mossbachers, right? But they're like a younger version. So I love that they have similarities, but they're also very different. But more importantly, I'm very excited to see this new, these two married couples and how they're going to mish on this week of vacation. Which, speaking of the week, I forgot to mention that it's going to be kind of very similar to season one where we get the title card that says one week later. So we get to see what led to the events of those different guests dying and being killed and end up in water but you learn about ethan's backstory that he recently became rich by selling his company and that him and cameron were college roommates but now all of a sudden him and ethan are hanging out a little bit more which i don't know if that speaks to ethan to being like he seems to we'll talk about Cameron a little bit later but he seems to be a good guy but I think there's something there that he's hiding and we'll talk about how he views the world a little bit later but I'm, I'm liking the dynamics thus far I definitely got to get into the foreshadowing that we get very early on I'm talking about those head art pieces hey what is with these head things of infidelity and lies led to a wife killing her husband and i don't know if y'all peeped this but did you all catch what daphne said to cameron let me play a quick clip for you all Warning to husbands, babe, screw around and you'll end up buried in the garden. So again, Daphne, that's one of many times this episode. She calls, talks about murder and someone dying and killing her husband potentially. Again, does she have anything to do with those people that she found earlier in the episode? We're going to get to that a little bit later. But getting back to the discussion, we get the backstory of the Grasso family and their ties to Sicilians. And they're looking to learn more about their family heritage and about their where they come from, their roots. And we learn that Bert likes young women. And 
and he uh, likes to flirt with them and he farts in front of them. And getting back into this dynamic of these three men and this three generations of a grandfather, a dad, and a son, and just seeing, number one, how Bert interacts with different people, but in particularly his son, where I see Dom is very embarrassed by his dad. And then look at how Albie looks at his father and it seems like Dom is kind of not present and we'll talk about that reason a little bit later. He cheated it on his wife and left his family and whatnot, but it's just very interesting to see that that three generations and I'm very excited to see how it's going to play out for the rest of the season and we'll talk about a conversation that they have a little bit later, but I'm enjoying their interaction so far and I mean, come on guys. Michael Imperioni, Christopher from the you know Sopranos. Again, I can't just praise enough. The cast is just absolutely stacked. I'm so excited to get more of these characters. But as we kind of move on and talk a little bit about Dom, I kind of mention it, but we find out later in this episode that he's currently going through a divorce or he might already be divorced, but neither here nor there, we can assume that he cheated on his wife and she hates him for that, right? And he talks about how he wants to talk to his daughter, but she doesn't like him. And the only reason Albie's there is because he's a good hearted guy and he wants to, you know, probably be there for his dad and, and, and kind of maybe from his dad because we learned that Dom is successful. He works in Hollywood or whatnot. So he probably wants to be able to maybe pick up some of those personality traits for he can be successful moving on. But again, Dom is a cheater and he's not the only one that might be cheating in this season. But I mentioned that I had a theory that I want to share with you all. But before we get into that theory, let's hear a quick word for today's sponsor of the video. Today's video is sponsored by Into the AM. Into the AM is a clothing company with a variety of amazing products such as t-shirts, hoodies, jackets, shorts and underwear, headwear and much more. Their t-shirts have unique designs, they're incredibly soft and extremely comfortable and they're made to last. But the best part is you can get 10% off by using my discount code MOVIEFILES when you're selecting your new gear, which you can find that code in the description below. So shout out to the sponsor of this video, Into the AM. I love their attire and if you all want to get a shirt or a hat or all the amazing apparel they have, you can use my discount code that is in the description of this video. But let's talk about my theory. So I don't know if y'all noticed, but it was like halfway through the episode, there was this emphasis on this slow motion shot and we see this man carrying a briefcase and this is where my mind goes. I took it as, and going back to those people being killed and then they put an emphasis on this mysterious man with the briefcase. Do we think that that man is a serial killer and there might be some bodies in that suitcase? I might be way off, but I just found it very odd that they put an emphasis on that slow motion and in particularly putting a light on his briefcase and in the back of his head. We don't see the front of his head. Again, he could just be a random guest, Ellie. He could just be a nobody. Just remember that. Remember that. Again, if, if that doesn't happen, we'll forget about this, but just remember that guy. I think there might be something there and I think we might have a serial killer on our hands this time around, especially that there's multiple people that ends up dead at the beginning of this episode. Let me know your thoughts on that. But I haven't talked about one of my favorite characters of season one. Let's talk about Tanya and what's going on with her as she's greeted by her husband. That's right, her husband, Greg, who last time we saw her and Greg, he was talking about he's gonna be dying soon and she you know, dropped everything to be with him. Uh, their relationship is very interesting this season as Greg isn't happy with Portia, who we learn is Tanya's assistant, and he wants her to get rid of Portia. And we see Tanya, who is just so submissive at this point so far. And she's like, Portia, I need you to go as far as away from us. But secretly kind of stay a little bit close just in case I need you. So we can tell that she's found her, Belinda, I think was the character's name in season one. She's kind of replaced her with Portia. So and poor Portia, we'll talk about her later. But Greg and Tanya, I don't know if they're going to make it by the end of the season. Not just because he's ter terminally ill, but I don't think their relationship is that strong in a foundation for them to continue to move on. But we see Portia is going through her own problems and working for Tanya isn't making it better. As let's kind of pivot over and talk a little bit about Mia and Lucia, who we see them attempting to sneak into the hotel and they're trying to interact with different guests. And I think those two characters are going to be very important, especially Lucia, who we'll talk about at the end here, but it's almost kind of like they're the outsiders trying to get in into the hotel, trying to interact with the guests. And I think we should keep an eye on those two characters because they were kind of just on the outskirts of this episode, but I think they're going to be pivotal moving forward. But one of my favorite elements of the show, and that's the conversations that are had in season one when they had breakfast and when they had dinner. Let's talk about this kind of, I guess it was a lunch discussion that we have here with the two married couples as we learn that 
Harper is a lawyer who represents clients who sue their employers based on their wrongdoings and terminations. And we see Cameron kind of put it in his two cents and kind of giving you a little bit of what type of person he is, which kind of alludes to why Harper isn't a fan of him. See that Cameron thinks that people that do that to their employers are he didn't say that they're lying, but he said it's kind of a waste of time and kind of a waste of money and, and, and putting them in that position that they're in. And he doesn't say like, oh, I didn't mean it that way. But it's like, bro, you, you, you definitely meant it that way. And we see Harper look at Ethan and they definitely on the same page. Like, oh, these people are just like white privilege, right? Which I would imagine that she deals with those people with her day job at court all the time. But in particularly when they talk about living in a bubble, we see Harper brings up that she has a hard time sleeping because the world's crazy. The world's going to end. And we see Cameron and his wife talking about, oh, the world's not going to end. And they're like, uh, have you not seen the news? Like, no, nah, we don't really watch the news. We're just kind of, you know, keep to our own. And then they kind of get into politics a little bit. And then they also talk about like what they consume as far as TV and entertainment. And I just found, again, this is what I love about this show, the social commentary. Again, is it wrong for Cameron and his wife to not be consumed with media and allowing this, you know, certain things to get into their head? Or is it right for them to do that, right? I for me personally, I try to consume the things that matter to me, but I don't like try to take in all the news. Like I don't watch the news that much, but I like to stay informed. So again, there's like a balance there, but you can kind of get the sense that Harper's judging them. She's very judgmental. And again, I love Arby Plaza and I'm very interested to see where this character goes, but let me know what you all thought about that conversation. And if what side do you take on not allowing media to like consume you and to kind of influence your decisions? Let's have that discussion in the comment section. But as we move on, I love how they bring up Ted Lasso, which I love that name drop because I'm a big Ted Lasso fan. But going back to what's going on with Portia and Albie, they're kind of, you know, getting to know each other. But unfortunately, we see Burks coming down. He falls on the floor. But I wouldn't be surprised if Burt fell on purpose because we see that he's interested in young women. Let me know if you think that that fall was purposeful or if it was an accident. And speaking of accidents, Maybe Bert's one of those people that ends up drowning in the water. Let me know your thoughts on that. But follow back up with Tanya and Greg, who's having some afternoon sex, but things get cut off after Tanya has a bit of a moment. And y'all will notice that Greg was kind of being a douche. She was talking about her weight, eating the macaroons and drinking all the wine. I'm like, yo, yo red flags, Tanya, leave this man. But she thinks that he is just so in love with her and he puts her first. It's like, nah, bruh, I, I don't believe all that. And we'll talk about something a little bit later, but their relationship is vest definitely going to be chaotic this season. But speaking of chaotic relationships, let's talk about this scene here. As we see Cameron and Harper having a moment in their room, as we see Cameron thanking her for coming and being a part of Ethan's life because when they were in college, he didn't really bring too many women around. But then Cameron's changing his pants with Harper, who can clearly see him in the bathroom mirror, taking off his drawers and, you know, changing in front of her. And she's just like, okay, yep, thank you. Question I have for you all. Will there be some cheating going on between those two? I, Harper hates him. And that's like the, the stereotypical TV movie trope, right? The, the character that hates one character but ends up like doing something stupid like cheating on them. I don't know if that's going to happen, but I wouldn't be surprised. Let me know your thoughts on that scene. And do you see those two crossing paths in the bedroom again? Let's talk about it in the comments. But as we move on, I don't want to forget this because I mentioned it up top. One of the things I love about season one is the cinematography and the score. And this first episode was so beautifully shot from the daytime shots and nighttime shots. Again, the score. Oh, the score just puts me in the mood. It's, it's so mesmerizing. Again, the production was flawless. So I, I didn't want to miss that in this review. But let's get back into the discussions here. And it's dinner time. Let's talk about these dinner time discussions. We see Bert talking about how he still can, you know, get aroused. <laughs> and how he pleasures himself and how important that is. Again, I'm so excited about the Grasso family. Just seeing how Albie is trying to take information from his father. Also trying to get information from his grandfather. Their dynamic so far is just really entertaining. But also, we see the two mysterious characters. Again, they just kind of popped up in the episode. I think they're going to be very pivotal. We see Mia and Lucia coming in, looking very pretty, and they're catching all the eyes of our main characters, which, again, I think they're going to be very pivotal. A moment that was so funny to me. Again, I love these dinner and these breakfast scenes. But when we see Tanya, when she notices that Portia is at the dinner table, and she's, like, giving her the death stare. She's like, go do 
your that moment was so funny. I feel so bad for Portia, man. I'm really excited to learn more about her, and I love that actress too. But let's wrap up the episode here. As we see, Bert is staying with Albie after his fall, but then we see Lucia is making her way into who is that mystery guy she was waiting for at the docks? Well, it turns out to be Dom who lets her in, and we'll talk about them here in a second. But we also move on to what's going on with Maya, who's trying to have just a decent, regular conversation with the guy playing the piano. But he kind of misconstrues this information, thinks she's a prostitute, and tries to have sex with her. Again, I think Mia is going to be very important. Uh, I'm really enjoying those two characters so far because they're so mysterious. We, we don't know that much about her. We know she recently broke up with someone and she's not trying to fall back into a relationship. She's not trying to sell herself for sex to pay for her art. So I'm really intrigued to learn more about her. But yes, we might be wrong a little bit because I talked a little bit about Cameron and his wife and how Harper thinks that they're faking their love. Well, they seem to be pretty in love when he's like tickling her and she's saying goodbye to their kids. Again, it could be all a facade and we'll learn more about them. But speaking of learning more about them, that dynamic between Harper and Ethan, they don't seem to be like they seem to be level headed and on the same page. But again, I love you, Aubrey, but your character Harper is just so judgmental. And we see how Ethan's at work and they're listening to them having fun. They're talking about how they're passing as the diverse friends. I'm so intrigued to see which one of these couples will end up together by the end of the season and if any of those characters will end up dying. Very intrigued to see where that goes. But as Ethan is winding down, I don't think it's a coincidence that we see him looking at that headpiece and we also saw Tanya earlier looking at that same headpiece and I think it alludes to, number one, I think Ethan's going to cheat. I, as I mentioned uh, Harper maybe sleeping with Cameron. I think I have my money more on Ethan messing around with one of those two women, Mia, probably Mia, if not Lucia, but also going back to Tanya, she definitely feels like someone's cheating, and particularly Greg, and we get this weird scene here where we see him whispering on the phone, he claims it's someone from work, like, I don't know, again, I don't like Greg, man, and he had this kind of, he was a red hair in season one, but I think he's definitely up to something, and I definitely think one of those two characters will find their partner cheating, if not both of them. Let me know your thoughts on that. But in with Lucia attempting to have small talk with Dom, but that doesn't last long because things heat up. They hook up. We end the show with the amazing score. And this season, I just have a feeling. It's going to be amazing. Ciao to season two. I'm here for it. I love this first episode. I love these dynamics. I love, again, the conversations being had. I love the dinner conversations, the breakfast conversations. And I'm just very intrigued to see where the season goes. And again, we'll see if my theory about that man being a mystery serial killer or if Delilah has something to do. Because again, I can't refer it enough. She said so many times when they were talking about the headpieces. Oh, husband is up, you know, dying. Don't mess with the wife. And then she talks about how she's really into like uh, TV shows that involves death and murder. So keep an eye on that character. But that's my thoughts on season two, episode one. I absolutely loved it, but I want to know your thoughts in the comments. Again, thoughts, theories, what did you take away from it? And what do you all hope to see? But again, like I said up top, I love this show. I love interacting with you all. Do you want to have these conversations every single week? If you do, show me by liking, sharing, commenting. You want to have these discussions. And if you haven't already, come and join the community. Subscribe to the channel. You all have been awesome. Hope you enjoyed today's breakdown. As you can see on the screen now, come and join the community. Check out my other reviews for this show. Check out my most recent review. And we'll catch you all on the next breakdown.